Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the 2022 ASUS Zephyrus G14 gaming laptop. New for 2022, the latest iteration of the G14 from ASUS isn't afraid to take enormous leaps. Bringing you an incredibly fun yet potentially daring gaming laptop might just surprise you in more ways than one. At first glance, there's a lot of aspects jumping to my attention. Not only is it smaller and lighter than the previous model, it's gone full AMD for both processing power and graphics, the touchpad is noticeably larger, the inputs and connections are much improved, and who can possibly ignore the customizable dot animation LED grid that takes up half the display on the back? I'm already excited to find out what this laptop can do, but first, let's go over the design here. For starters, it does come in either grey or white, depending on what better suits your tastes. And of course, today we'll be repping the grey version. As expected, there's definitely no mistaking who made this laptop, as the ROG styling dominates every inch here. You get the stylistic reflective Republic of Gamers logo on the bottom left on the back, the familiar angular vents along the hinge, some beautifully thought out vents on the underside for maximum airflow, and lastly, a subtle yet statement Zephyrus logo just below the display. So they've clearly thought about portability and convenience this time around. When closed, it's a neat, almost square-like package as opposed to the usual rectangular shape. Of course, I'm excited to get into the anime LEDs on the back, but mostly it makes a nice texture, giving it just a little bit more character than most smooth plain faces I've seen on previous laptops. Holding it in my hands, it's super lightweight and easy to carry about. Looking at the keyboard, I'm pleased to see that even though the touchpad is larger, it doesn't compromise on the size of the layout or the amount of features you get. Everything is smooth to the touch, from the keys to the actual material of the body itself. The keys are relatively shallow, but still manage to retain that little satisfying clicky sound when typing. Despite the small size, typing is an overall comfortable experience, making it great for those long study sessions out on the go. All the usual keys are there along with a power button at the top as well as some ASUS specifics like the armory crate key for managing things like fan speed and of course backlight. Although there is a backlight on this keyboard it only shows the default white light with a handful of light patterns available if you want to change things up. However this only seems to be the case on the starting model in the range as you can get the RGB lights on the more expensive models. Now as I have quite large hands I love the extra touchpad space not just through browsing the internet but also for gaming and using creative programs. It's beautifully responsive and I had no real complaints as it worked just as fast as I did with no interruptions. The screen size is now a slightly taller 16 by 10 ratio with a bezel as small as you can expect on a laptop. Interestingly, you'll find a webcam along the top which is handy to have in the age of video calls, leaving one less accessory to carry around. Something I love to see in a laptop is a decent screen hinge extension. It's beautifully flexible, pushing back practically to the desk here, opening up viewing angles for a more comfortable degree when at a low desk or on your lap, even allowing you to angle it away from glare to save strain in both your neck and your eyesight. Just considering the actual size and design though, I love how small and compact it is. Only weighing about 1.72 kilograms, I found it easy to tuck under my arm when walking, slip it into a bag when heading out, or even just simply moving it between various workstations with little effort involved. You have to love the combination of light but powerful, it's an amazing feat to see in a modern laptop. So assuming the internal specs are as powerful as they claim, this laptop could be a game changer for me. Before we discuss the specs, let's quickly play around with the most interesting aspect of the design, the anime matrix. Now this is no one trick pony. Not only can you use the presets if you want to stay true to the ROG design, you can completely customize it to your heart's content, showing off whatever animation or text that suits your mood day to day. It's the ultimate form of expression and a part of the laptop that often gets overlooked or left blank. I loved spending some time playing around with the different options, but mostly I was interested to see that I could use it for actual practical reasons, like displaying battery life or even just viewing the time, getting useful information without needing to open up the laptop at all. If you're concerned about how well you can see it throughout the day though, there's no need to worry. Of course, it's clearer in a dark environment, but even in daylight, I could see it clear and sharp, which is great to know it's a feature not wasted. As fun as it is though, you don't have to keep it on all the time and you can be a little more concerned conservative by just turning it off completely to preserve that precious battery life. Looking along the sides, you get a good range of inputs and connections. On the right, there's two 3.2 USB Type A's, another Gen 2 Type C, and a micro SD reader. On the left, there's a power input, a 2.0 HDMI, a dual Gen 2 USB C with both DisplayPort and power delivery, and finally a 3.5mm headphone jack. 
Now I'm not a big fan of power inputs being placed on the side as these sometimes do get in the way, but at least all of the inputs are in an easy to reach place. Now let's get into the display quality on offer here. You're looking at a 16x10 FHD display with an impressive 91% screen to body ratio. It's got 100% sRGB colour and Pantone validation for accurate creative work and a better than average 500 nits screen brightness that puts out a brilliantly vibrant picture. Now we have the 14 inch display with the 1920x1080 resolution that fully supports up to 144Hz refresh rate with a comfortable 3 milliseconds response time as well as that additional adaptive sync tech for ultra smooth flawless gameplay. Watching a few movie trailers I thought the quality was incredibly sharp even with standard definition content. The brightness did seem a little dim in a bright room making dark scenes a little hard to see but overall I was happy with the quality across most of the content that I watched. With it being a matte display some colours seemed a little dull but animated movies seemed to shine bright with certain colours standing out bright and clear. I was surprised to find that it also had a pretty amazing viewing angle. I could turn it sharply away from me and still get a glimpse of that perfectly vivid display which was great. There's hardly any instances of glare ruining the view, perfect for bright rooms like this where controlling the lights is out of the question. Now comes the important part, seeing what strides ASUS have made in the internal specs. It's a great start to see that we already get Windows 11 so there's no need to upgrade this before getting into use. Now in a fascinating twist, ASUS has completely moved away from any Intel or Nvidia properties and have opted for an all AMD setup. Now you get an 8 core Ryzen 7 6800HS mobile processor accompanied by an 8GB AMD Radeon RX 6700S graphics with ROG boost. To help support it, it's also equipped with two 8GB DDR5 RAM slots that's capable of a max capacity of 24GB if you choose to upgrade. Of course, as it's a gaming laptop, you're also blessed with a 1TB SSD, perfect for storing all those games and creative apps that you're hopefully planning to utilise with this powerful support. It's definitely built for supporting those higher performance titles here, delivering an 8GB dedicated VRAM overall. As Azus often supports the Xbox Game Pass, I'll be using it to download and run the majority of games you'll see being played here. For gaming, I was pleasantly surprised by the performance. Interestingly, when starting up games like Forza Horizon 5 and Back for Blood, the game suggests running the highest quality preset from the get-go. It did even want me to play Forza in extreme quality, and even though it attempted it and ran it pretty smoothly for a while, the laptop clearly didn't have the support from the RAM, reverting to ultra or high quality from then on. In high quality though, the game performed exceptionally well. I could race through the streets at insane speeds and not come across any stuttering or tearing. Running a quick benchmark on mains power, you can see how comfortable the system is running a game at high performance. It achieved a refresh rate of 122 FPS, which isn't anything to complain about, and though it counted a few stutters, it clearly wasn't enough to disrupt gameplay. However, when running back for blood, I did notice some considerable tearing and high quality. I did lower down the quality a bit and saw a little bit of improvement, so the game was still comfortable to play even after the fact. As I've mentioned before, the display is supposed to output an amazing 500 nits of brightness. For the purposes of this video, I'll most likely have the brightness set to max, so bear this in mind when seeing the majority of the display output in this video. Now the brightness wasn't as vibrant as I'd expected, however putting it through a few display tests, I didn't notice any glaring inconsistencies like IPS glow or dead pixels, getting an overall clean picture throughout use. Even though the laptop is relatively thin, the advanced vapour chamber cooling system inside does help keep things relatively cool even after hard use. Now there's a significant amount of vents around the machine, so it had plenty of chance to breathe no matter how I used it. I found the armoury crate and various fan modes to help here, as I could monitor how hot it was getting and alter the fans to prevent any overheating. The main body did get hot after being on for about 4 hours while running games and movies, but it wasn't uncomfortable to hold or type, and it did cool down pretty quickly after a while. When it comes to sound though, this laptop has again intrigued me. Usually when I get to sound on a laptop, I'm not expecting much. But weirdly, the G14 holds some serious speaker quality, utilising two forward firing speakers and two smart amp woofers, placed strategically for ultimate output no matter how you place it, on top of supporting a 5.1.2 channel surround sound powered by Dolby Atmos. Now it may seem a little overkill, but it's seriously something I find a lot of laptops fall short on. You're not going to want to 
to listen to sound through your headphones all the time, so I genuinely enjoyed hearing a decent output for watching YouTube videos and movies without needing a heavy duty set of expensive headgear. Petiet is ridiculously loud. I can hear it clearly from the other side of the room, which of course is great for picking up those conversations in cutscenes, even when walking away for a second. So why should you take my word for it? Here's a quick sound sample recorded to the best of my ability to give you a quick idea on the quality on offer here. Finally, I want to discuss what the battery life was like for me. Before use, Azus mentions in their specs that you get a 76 watt hour 4 cell lithium ion battery. Now that doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but what I do know is that we do get access to the fast charging feature with the USB-C, along with this handy 100 watt adapter. Even after using it practically non-stop since turning it on and putting it through some rigorous use in both games, general browsing, and just leaving it on for long periods of time, I thought the battery life was okay, just out of habit and of course for the better performance power, I did play games with the battery on charge, but outside of this, the battery still lasted a good few hours, roughly between 4-6 to six hours depending on what I was doing. Of course it was hard for me to test the battery on the whole, because my use was generally irregular, but to know it could last me on the go watching a few videos and typing out documents, I was assured enough to not be constantly keeping an eye on the power. It also kept its word, charging up to about 50% when on low in as little as 30-40 to 40 minutes. So after using this laptop for a couple of days, I was impressed with the power performance for both general use and gaming. I loved having the fun anime matrix on the back of the display, adding that extra level of personalization that makes my laptop unique to any other machine that I've seen. Gaming is brilliant both on and off battery power, letting me play some of those top high performance titles in high to ultra quality without any struggle. The slightly taller display and the large touchpad gives me so much more room to play with, making general use and app control much easier. So if you are considering upgrading to a new gaming laptop, then I would highly recommend this one simply based on that power performance alone. So what are your thoughts on the 2022 G14? Let us know in the comments below and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.